Hey everybody, in this video we're going to use long press and auto events to make an alert UI for the Apple Watch. Let's get started. So the first step we're going to do is change our artboard size to Apple Watch and we'll change the background color to black. Now let's make the alert. So we'll add a rectangle in the screen and this seems like a pretty good alert size. We'll center it vertically. Make it white and give it a little bit of a radius. Now let's add the actual alert. We'll just have an exclamation point to show something really bad has gone on. Um, maybe your heart rate's too low or something. Uh, you're having a bad day. So we'll add that and we're gonna need a button so that we can actually dismiss this alert. So I'll hit Alt R to add a new layer as a child. This button will be along the bottom of the screen. And let's uh, turn on clip children on the parent. We'll name this dismiss or alert. Put the text inside of it. And name this dismiss button. We'll make the dismiss button red and let's give it a label. So we'll dismiss. We'll center the text and center the text layer and make the text white. All right, there we go. So there's our alert. And one final layer that we're gonna need in the future is we're gonna show some progress while you dismiss it. Um, so since this is a super important alert, we're gonna use a long press to dismiss it. And we want a little progress indicator to show how much longer you have to long press the layer. So we'll put this layer here Put it as a child and we'll make the layer green to show that everything's all good after you long press it for enough time and turn on clip children and make this layer have a width of zero so to start off you don't see it at all all right so that's our layers and we can just do a little housekeeping we can name them so we'll name this progress and put the dismiss label in the dismiss button. And we're good to go. So let's start adding all of our events. So to the button, we're gonna do a touch down. We're gonna drag onto the current artboard to duplicate it. And in this duplicate, we're going to drill down into the progress and we're gonna make the progress the full width. And now what we want to happen is when we touch up on this, if we do it before the long press is fired, it'll take us back to the beginning. So we'll do touch up, goes back to the first screen. So we can try that. So there we go. Touch down and up work properly. So let's give it a way to, to get out of this screen once you've long pressed enough. So we'll select dismiss button and then we'll do long press, duplicate the screen. And so let's try that out. So I press for a little bit, it just jumps between these first two screens. But if I hold for a long enough time, it takes us to the third screen and everything stays green. So you might be wondering how that's working. And what's happening is when we begin our touchdown here, this animation starts playing. And the long press takes half a second to run. So if we make this animation half a second, 0.5, then by the time this animation stops, our long press fires and it will take us to the third screen. So that animation just happens to coincide perfectly with the timing of the long press. So it gives you the illusion that it's really tracking the progress of the long press gesture. So on this screen, just to show the alerts being dismissed now, we can scale it down to zero. So let's see how that looks. I touch it a little bit. We never make the progress. I hold it, it dismisses. All right, so that's pretty great. And now we're kind of just stuck on this third screen. So let's simulate having uh, multiple really important alerts. So if we just used an auto event to take us back to the first screen, 
what's going to happen is we're going to get a, a scale up animation immediately. So it scales down, comes back. And that's because it's animating from the scale of zero here, going past the auto event, and it's animating back up to a scale of one. And if you ever want a layer to like do something different, you can use this little trick that I'll show you. So we're going to delete this event. And we'll add an auto event to a duplicate of this layer. <clears throat> and so now what's going to happen is in this layer, we're going to set up the initial position for the animation back to this artboard. So rather than get this exactly where we want it, um, I'm just going to delete that. I'll select it here, copy it, and then artboard 4, paste it and drag it off the bottom. So, all right, you with me? Things are getting crazy. Okay, so now we're adding one more auto event. And this is the, the final event structure that we're gonna have, but we're gonna have to go in and tweak some of these animations to make it do what you expect. But let's just see where we're at. So I press and hold, goes to the second and third screens, and then it goes to the fourth screen, and between these two, it animates down and then it animates back up. So let's see that one more time. All right, so there's some unwanted animations in there. We, we actually don't want to animate between these two since this screen is acting just to get everything ready for this animation. So what we'll do is in this Artboard 3 Auto transition, we'll just select everything and say no animation. So it'll instantly go from scaled zero here to down here without any animation. So this is going to give the illusion that there's a second dismiss alert coming into view now. Isn't that great? So we could just dismiss alerts all day long. And if you have a phone, you can view this on your phone and strap it to your wrist and see what it would be like as an Apple Watch app. Thanks for watching.